Hello everybody and welcome to It's A Sure Thing, the weekly online platform show where we interview people who are making a difference in the community and making a difference doing what they love and sharing their passion of, of how they make a difference. So thank you all for joining us for this episode. Uh, wherever you're coming from, please, you're welcome to um, make a note in the comments and let us know where you're from and let your friends and family know that we're on board tonight for a really special event. Hello, Kerry Ann Press and hello, Ree. Uh, so thanks, thanks for joining us. Um, a special night tonight, wherever you're actually tuning in from, uh, because we have a very special gentleman who's actually a my teacher um, and a very special friend and mentor of psychosomatic therapy. Um, he's been he's done so many things during the course of his life, uh, assisting people, listening to people, helping people, understanding people, working with their body, doing energy work, doing postural alignment, doing so many different things. And he's been doing psychosomatics and training others, including myself many years ago, in this incredible modality. So he's with us this evening and he's going to share with us all about how to listen to your body. So please welcome Sean Jago from Your Body and You Psychosomatics. Hi, Sean. Hey, Sue. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for coming on. It's been, I've been so excited about this because there's so much to fit into half an hour. So I will ask if people are interested as we're talking through and sharing as much information as you possibly can, if they've got any comments to ask, and then we'll go to questions as well at the end. So the topic today is listen to your body. Yep. So where would you like to start? <laughs> The wonderful vehicle, the wonderful vehicle of our soul, the body. And the body holds a very unique task on behalf of us because it actually enables the true ability of our expression to arrive and materialise. So it's the, the body itself is influenced in so many ways. So whether mentally, whether emotionally, whether it's actually physically, so environmental. So the body itself has so many systems. So if we look at the Western medicine model, so we look at all the body symptoms and the systems and how all the organs interact and how each of those systems are all interrelated and have relationships between each other. And then we have a look at the Eastern and go across and have the, the way in which the energetic system works. So the energetic system is kind of like how our bodies recharge, how it plugs in. So you've got that western side and you've got the eastern side. And at the moment, we need to really look at that because right at this very moment, we have an east and west conflict going on in the world. So that in itself is also going to show up in all sorts of representations of people whether that's historically, if they've come from a lineage been in war, that's going to activate that space for them. Um, but also, too, um, currently, when a conflict shows up, um, globally, we also experience the conflict that's happening with themselves. Sean, I might just ask you to just speak up a little bit. There's something going on with the sound here. Um, it's breaking up a little bit. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe just speak up a little bit or... I am having an echo on my end. Yeah, okay. So well, hopefully... <laughs> it is a little bit odd. It sounds like you're the TARDIS. Out, right? <laughs> All right, well, we'll just say hi to Simon. Simon Carter, he's, uh, he's said hello. Your face readings over the last seven years have changed his life. It's no. a bit cut in and cut out and breaking up a bit. Okay, well, hopefully... Adairs in the background sorting that for us. Thank you for letting us know. I thought it was just my connection uh, listening in. But um, let, let's let's talk about the word psychosomatics a little bit. Yeah, because, cool. Yeah, because when people hear that, I think they immediately think psycho. So give us give us your give us your overview of psychosomatics, please. Unfortunately, the word has been 
a little bit bastardised over time. So the Western medicine train has kind of beaten it in a very strange way. So the word itself does this. It actually took me many years to come to honour the word. So the psycho relates to the mind, but actually relates to the psyche of the person. The soma is the body. So, so far we've got the mind body and the atix on the end is actually the mind body emotion. It's a relationship that happens between my head and my innocence, yeah, my body. So it's really looking at how we interact within who we are. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Um, Sean, if you can just press that button at the top left and refresh your screen. Remember that thing that Adair mentioned. Sorry, folks, bear with us. So the top left of your screen, there's a little dial with all different little triangles in a circle and cogs. And that if you just refresh. No. Refresh from the web. Yes, please. Refresh from the web browser. <laughs> Okay, bear with us, folks. We'll we'll refresh and come back in a sec. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Hi, Marie. Hi, Heather. Sean will be back on in a moment, but if you can't hear him, it's not going to be much use. <laughs> so thank you for alerting us to that. Okay, we'll be back with us in a moment. All right. Yeah, lots of people. There's a few people who uh, we haven't got their names of that are saying Facebook users. So uh, I think there's a link that Adair can let you know. Here he is. Let's try that again. Am I back? Yes, I and much better. better. <sighs> <That's my power. laughs> the, the power of technology. Okay. So sure oh, yes Dis the body. The disease in the body oh yes um, and the emotions that are trapped in the body and they show up what yes. happens when we well, well what happens when we don't listen to the body well let's have a look and see how conflict is created in the first place so yeah. we know that we have a biological <laughs> we know that we have environmental influences and we also know that we have our own interpretation of life. So when we put those three principles in a room together and ask them to work out something joyful, it doesn't mm -hmm. always come out that way. So we kind of have to know how things sit at the table. Yeah, how they, how they get along. Who's who, who's where, who's doing what. Yes, um, I call my history the barbarians, if they're here. Hi. Um, I love you all very dearly, um, but of course there are <laughs> attitudes, things that live there that I've had to learn to contend with. Yeah. So, and just to let people know, the barbarians you refer to as your family. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just to be clear for people <laughs> who might not have worked out your humour yet. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Carry on. And so it's and with also too with having both of my parents um, die of cancer, different types of cancer. There are also hidden habits that reside within my own physical being that can become disease. So in honour of my own evolution, I need to be in contact with what my biological history is, what my epigenetics, so what, what has affected me environmentally but also what is my ultimate translation how am i empowering myself with that translation of who i am and where i've been and where i'm going yeah yeah so there was one stage in my life where there was no power at all so i had to learn how to reintroduce power i didn't have a very good relationship with it so it was one of those things where i had to learn how to have that exist within me and I, I love that about you when you share in the training and um, the workshops and, and talks that you do, 
how it has affected you in every area of your life, in your physical, your motion, emotional, your mental, and having to almost pick up the pieces of the jigsaw that were scattered everywhere and start to build them and put them back together again from broken bones, um, from disconnected cells, from absolutely everything. Um, yeah. I don't know if you wanted to share a little bit about that, but the, the experience of you bringing yourself back to wholeness. Well, life can obliterate us in all sorts of ways, whether whether that's as a child and the impacts that take place, whether it's in primary school, high school, wherever we are, there are impacts. And those impacts split us apart and we have to bring all of those parts back together again. And so rather than... Um, site events that happen and there are truckloads of them and I've had my fair share of huge events. It's really about understanding how to put the pieces back together again. What is the magnetism that keeps me living? What is the magnetism that appreciates as I grow that invites my mind and the habits of my mind, the also the outlook of that space. What is my emotional habits and and what are my emotional propensities? Because sometimes I only want a minimal diet emotionally, but actually there's a lot more to be had. And there that that in itself also creates how we experience our body. Mm. So, so so the shape, the shape that your body is in. Mm tells a million stories about how you, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let you explain that. Well, how you respond to being you. So all of us have this, the same vehicle. We all have fingers, toes, systems, organs. Yes, there are some people that are born um, without some parts and there are some people that are born with extra parts. And realistically all the parts are the same but how we relate to them and how we utilize them and what we do with all of those parts is has an effect on the body and we can see in the body whether somebody is challenged or which part of their life they're challenged in or multiple parts of their life that they're challenged in whether that's by their structure whether it's how their body is organized whether it's their body's willingness to experience muscle tone or whether it um whether it has lethargy in the flesh all of these things tell us so much more about how somebody is experiencing their current existence yeah, yeah. and the beauty of psychosomatics and the work that you do is that as soon as you put awareness on those parts of the body it can be released Trauma can be released, the emotion blocked, the blocked emotion can be released. Um, and it's quite, I mean, I've seen it, I've witnessed it when we when we oh, do it, the training, I've witnessed it. It's there, evolution, right? Right? It's evolution in the making. It's yeah. undoing what's been stored and it's recalibrating it so it now serves you. Yeah. And there are parts of our lives that we might not like and we decompartmentalize from them and notice the word itself. But also too, when we separate ourselves from seeing something, we also misunderstand it. We misunderstand the power behind something that could, that seems gruesome, yeah. but actually yeah. it's learning how to embody that, how to allow that to exist. When I can trust my physical body to process some of the most horrific things that take place in life that's when it actually naturally recalibrates this is not based on what you logically think at all this is actually about allowing the body to naturally perform its design task beautiful yes Thank you didn't you. digest milk from your mother as a baby because your mind says that's the right thing to do it's yeah. automatic it's yeah. natural it's organic and when we're willing to actually finally accept how something's been existing within us and we no longer fight with it, then we suddenly know how to make peace. 
Beautiful. Thank you. And now Adair's asked a really good question. Do past life experiences reflect in our current bodies? Absolutely, yes. And so often that can appear on different levels. So whether that is a physical response to something that's nearby, whether it's an emotional reaction to something that's occurring, or whether it's actually something that we hear in our mind or our mind wants to avoid. So there are often, um, our life is here, we, we arrive here to evolve, but we also arrive here to culminate history. So anything that's been hidden in my life or my past lives will inevitably show up in front of me during this life. So yeah. as you negotiate this life, be sure to be have the greatest of clarity with what you're working with. Yeah, fabulous. Thank you. Great question. Now, the other thing as well is how do we listen to our body? So if, yeah. if you wanted to just say to a few people, okay, this is how you actually do it. How do you go in and listen? Yep, 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 yep. Because most of us will hear a voice that takes place in one way or another, and that's usually the mental rhetoric um, that's taking place. Usually we'll have also a interaction or a reaction to how we emotionally feel. But the body itself resides at a completely different level. The body itself, when you relate to it as a child, as a newborn child, and you train your mind to create the appropriate space in conjunction with your emotions, you get direct access to your body. If you consider the body and the flesh as the deepest of relationships that you could ever create on behalf of your own innocence, there's your path. If you're willing to hear the and feel the disruption that may be within your body, that in itself also changes how it may be embedded but also gives it life, gives it oxygen. And that in itself is where you get physical change. Beautiful. Beautifully said. I felt that. I actually really, really felt that. I was like <laughs> almost in tears, you know what I'm like. <laughs> so we've got, we have got a question. You know, if, if, if you recognise in your life how you wanted others to listen, and connect with you, you already have the direct atmosphere that your body requires in order for you to feel you. Yeah, beautiful. Thank Go you. Ahead. All right, so we have, uh, it does say Facebook user, I think I know who it is, but I won't mention names in case she wants to be anonymous. Always. So she's asked, when we have had extreme trauma in our lives as we ourselves know it so she's very aware of this um such as an extreme eczema in the base chakra area how do we interpret it and heal it great one because a lot of people do have eczema yep so we need to look one at the symptom itself and then we have to look at the placement of the symptom so we look at the symptom and we realize it's flesh it's skin. So the skin is our individuality. It is the layer that resides between me and you. Then we look also at the condition and the eczema itself flares up and it fires up. So it's quite angry and inflamed in its presence. Then we have to locate the base. So when we look at the base, the base is my place, my space here on earth. And this particular person has at one point in their life had to fight to exist. 
So the moment that there are boundaries that are challenged, her body system or their body system is automatically firing up and creating a defense mechanism. So rather than have that occur in a behavior, it's showing up in a body symptom. So it shows us part of the fear or terror that resides behind that space. Yeah, the panic that someone's going to invade my space. Yep. So it's and, learning and how to hold space, right? It's absolutely. learning how to occupy space. What is the benefit of space? Especially your own sacred space and your own home and around family members that trigger that. It's just going to flare and flare and flare and flare until at that stage you say, no, I'm not Enough. doing this anymore. Yep, stepping up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fantastic. Um, now someone else has written that was oh, Re has written that was so deep. I'll need to listen to the replay to comprehend. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like Sean, could, when he does the training, it's amazing, and you're just like, Whoa, that was profound! And then the next thing, and it's like, Whoa, that was profound. <laughs> <laughs> so, which actually leads me to we might as well talk about this now. So, thank you for showing all of that. So, Sean and another psychosomatic, uh teacher Linda Thackeray who was actually on here a few months back have joined forces and put together a online psychosomatic therapy training course that is happening in October yeah. so obviously it's not one-on-one -on -one, but you can get as much information as you can from you so just explain a little bit about it please cool so it we still have it as a sacred space we lock the room um, and we go through as much as we can with information about psychosomatics but also uh, face reading, hand reading, uh, feet reading. We really go through and have a look at the intricacies of how the body exists, why the body exists the way it does and what are the signatures or nuances inside that form. So we have a look at the emotional anatomy, um, we go through the face splits so we get to have a look at a deep dive at who you are as an individual, but also where you're at at this point in time. So you can also go to the um, Intact website, which is the Association for Psychosomatics. Um, there's lots of um, details around different courses that are available, who's running them, what's going on. Um, but the next live, live event that I'm in um, is that online one in October. And um, and now that Melbourne is starting to get its feet back as far as connecting, um, there will be some live courses running in Melbourne as well. Fantastic. And, yes, you are based in Hawthorne and Minbone. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was like, yeah. But if people would like to have a session with you, you are available via Zoom. And yeah. you can do the face readings and, and just briefly on the face readings, just a little bit of information as what will happen with a face reading. Yes. So we'll take a photo. We do what's called the face split, but we go through the whole face and we look at how a person is formulated. We look at their mental zone. We look at how they operate, how they function, just based on the shapes and also the um the familiarities that take place within a face and all the interrelationships that also take place. Um, so it can be very insightful um, to be seen for who you are rather than who you might think you would prefer to be or how everybody else sees you. Beautiful. And with, with the face reading, it's all the body shows up in the face. So whatever's going on here, it shows up in the body, it shows up in the hands, it shows up in the feet. So... Yeah, which the is face you the reflection of the entire body yeah yeah so if people think that they're able to actually hide what's really going <laughs> on um if you know um, um, look I, I really do think they should we should teach this in schools because I, the I, compassion I, that come yeah the compassion that comes from understanding that somebody's going through trauma and if you actually stop and look and say hey how are you and actually look at them in the eyes instead of just going hey going mate you know it's it's a very very different experience and it's a soul that that's why i love this work as well is because it's that soul connection 
and you go you go deep you, you know it's 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 not about the weather it's talking about well, it's deep. Deep. so deep deep is what it is <laughs> deep is what it is yeah so beautiful simon he's poor i highly recommend a one-on-one -on -one with sean and so do i you know it was a long time ago that i met sean at the body mind psychic expo actually <laughs> i think i was pregnant oh my god so it would have been 15 years ago Thanks. and i was with my mom <laughs> And I had no idea what it was um, or anything. Um, but I remember you. I remember you telling me that I was going to have a, a boy, and that um, I'd be pretty much divorced within within a few years. And yeah, that all happened. <laughs> Not that you're a psychic, but there you go. I mean, you can see it in the body. <laughs> well, that's accessing truth, really. Being yeah. psychic is accessing truth. And when you plug in appropriately through our physical form what you access is just a greater version of yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. So the online thing, people can contact you for the yep. online uh, workshop. Um, and also you were at an Adelaide Festival um, and I'm sure you'll be coming back to Adelaide to play with it <laughs> or whatever, whatever new yeah, things so are created. Falls me often. <laughs> we love having you in Adelaide. We love it. So... Um, are there any questions before we've got a few more minutes before we um, before we say goodbye? So are there any other questions? Sky's written. Uh, oh, my goodness. Sign me up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mar Marianne, best advice to help heal suppressed grief from 1985 loss of my mum. Uh, yeah. yeah. Grief sits in the body, doesn't it? Grief is is one of the most magnificent experiences that. I've had the pleasure of experiencing over and over again. And the one thing for me is that grief is messy, ugly, and really sporadic. And when we receive just the right loving care and touch, grief can find its way out. As long as we're willing to allow it to exist in its most unique form on its way through because we do have to digest it we have to process it yeah otherwise it gets suppressed and it shows up in the yeah. body and doesn't leave or, we, or, it, or it's left unfinished mm -hmm. finished because it's a closure what happens with grief is is that when a parent leaves, and this was referring to her mum, when our mum leaves us, all those parts of us that she's been fully responsible of and cared for from in utero is then handed back to us. And then we're asked to care for that. We're asked to love that for the rest of our lives. Yes, because they depart, they've done their job, and then they hand that back to us. So it's like we take back all that we have been in order to live my life as who I am now. Grief is such a beautiful thing. It's an amazing, empowering experience. Yeah. And it's all part of it's all part of life, isn't it? It's all part of the process. It's, ine it's inevitable. It's inevitable. Oh, it's been an absolute joy. Thank you, Simon. You've both helped me through so much of my grief. Love and light your way always. Thank you, Simon. And thank you to everybody. It's been a really lovely interactive session tonight, and I hope you've got lots out of it. Um, there will be a blog uh, on my uh, website um, in the next few days as well. So sueshaw.com.au. You'll also find Sean's details on there. Your Body and You, Psychosomatics is the link um, through the directory. And you'll also find the course details on there. But if you need to get in touch with him, just give him a call. He'll That's the way to do it. Let's <laughs> make it fun. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Make life pleasurable, live in joy all the time, like Sean. <laughs> Thank you, my darling.